Keep California Cowgirls from vanishing. Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Sadie practices over the haunches with an ATV mechanical cow simulator. Pulling slack. And Susie's coming my way because she feels the pressure behind her horns. We try the harness training pole on Eve. This is an exciting and potentially important day for us. This is the first time Katie and I, and we're all alone today, so we're going to just leave the camera on us, are trying to hook up our uh, homemade training harness pole to Eve with some dog choke chains actually that are nice and smooth, relatively strong, and notice that we have a quick release hook to the front of the harness pole. So we don't expect any trouble with Eve. She's so nicely dispositioned and so forth that but, you know, we're going to be doing this with Sadie, too, and Eve's daughter, who's younger and uh, less uh, desensitized to all this stuff. So, Katie, what do you think? Is it still too long? You see, it is a little too long. it's a little too long. We do have a bolt cutter and some uh, chain that we can cut to size. Let's uh, show on the camera where we want it to go. And then we'll turn off the camera and see what we can do to get it there. We, we have one video um, on YouTube that's about, uh, I don't know, somewhere between two and four minutes uh, where uh, it's called Horse Paintings, where a couple have uh, created their own harness pole um, and show us how it works with their pairs of horses, young horses. Uh, so uh, we're, we study that video several times now already, and we just keep trying it on uh, Eve, and then eventually we'll uh, try it with Eve, uh, with Sadie, and then with Eve and Sadie. Okay, so Katie's going to remove one of the clasps, make it a little shorter. Essential, though, is to have at least one quick release that we can grab. and release if necessary. Okay, so she's quartering the chain, right? Yes. Still too low. Yeah. Okay, we're going to turn off the camera and see what we can do about this logistics problem. Well, I think we figured it out. It only took a couple minutes. If we use a clasp that's this size versus this size, it looks to us like the front of that harness pole is where we want it. To be sure though, we're going to try to move Eve. I'm going to open that gate over there. We're going to move her forward. I'm going to hold the back of the harness pole up and we're going to see if this plan works. Then, the next consideration is how we're going to get the tug straps to go from the collar to the back of the harness pole and attach to either end of the harness pole, depending upon what side the horse is on. So that will be our next objective. Now, I'm going to aim the camera this way. We feel comfortable doing this with just two of us because Evie's usually so good. So, uh, 
but I want to give her plenty of room to move through this gateway, which is actually a double gate. Okay, so I'm going to open this gate. Okay, now I've, now I've opened the gate. We don't have a camera operator, so I can only leave it in one place while we walk through the, the lens image. We're going to try to show you how this is going to work eventually with a maybe a third person standing right there on the other side of the front of the harness pole. Somebody leading Eve, then eventually somebody ground driving her with a, the bit and the blinders on her head. And one baby step at a time. Be sure that Evie is okay on this training harness pole. And then uh, be sure that Sadie is okay on it. And then try Eve and Sadie, which are mother and daughter. Okay, so here we go. We won't be able to talk to you much, but I might turn around and try to say something loud if there's something important to say. Can you hold it up there? Okay, okay step up. Step up, Eve. Step up. Step up. Good. Steady. Oh. Could you quick release it? Okay. Put it down. Walk her forward and then come back. Well, that totally worked. We even did the quick release with one hand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is important because sometimes if you're in a bind, you only have one hand available. It felt good to me. How about to you? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to turn off the camera. We're going to set it up again so that Eve is right here. We're going to put at least one of the tug straps on and make sure we have all of the hardware necessary to attach the tug straps without them falling off while we move. Okay, one small step at a time, we're fitting harness. That, those tug straps are shorter than what the harness pole requires for us to reach the back of the harness pole. So we took one of those dog choke chains, connected it to the tug straps, and if it's not a real heavy load, we feel confident that we'd be able to continue to pull. But instead, we'll see, uh, we already glued a couple of parts. Instead, we might just shorten the harness pole a little bit. Okay, that's our session for today on fitting the harness pole to the harness on Firecrest Easter Eve. We attach the training harness pole to Sadie's harness. Doesn't accept the straps and the pipes and the clasps and all as, as nicely as Eve does, so we're uh, just uh, doing a very small baby step today. As you can see, we have Sadie's collar on, her surcingle on, and we've already connected the training harness pole with the clasp and the quick release. Katie, point to the quick release. So that if there is trouble, we'll immediately quick release it. All right, now what I'm going to do, again, we don't have a camera operator, and we're only going to take a few steps. What I'm going to do is pull this focus and this camera all the way back so we can show you as much of it as we can today. I'm going to go and pick up the back of the training harness pole. Katie's very carefully going to ask Sadie to step a couple steps forward. And quick release if we get into trouble. Then 
Yeah, she tried to put her head down, a little scary. Then we're going to release the training harness bolt, turn Sadie around and do what we did with Eve yesterday, try a tug strap. release it. Try not to let it drop, okay? Now walk her out. You saw Sadie's attitude swishing her tail. It's not a good attitude. We're going to work on that with repetition. And really very small baby steps here so that we can quit on good notes, especially because there's just the two of us Okay, and now I had the tug strap around my neck along with a couple of different chains. I'm going to turn the harness pole around. Remember that the harness pole, the ABS piece, is a slightly longer than perhaps we would have wanted it, but we've already glued it, so instead of trying to cut it and find connectors, we're just going to extend the tug straps with some safe chain to use. I'm showing you Sadie's head because she is watching me, but she's upheaded. She's just not sure what we're going to be doing. There are gnats flying around here, and she has a gnat allergy, so that, that uh, flapping of her tail might be just flapping the gnats away. Okay, so now I'm going to carefully go and turn this harness pole. By carefully, I mean I don't want to scare Sadie. I'm going to let her see it move very very slowly it's all right it's all right it's all right drag it on the ground ever so slowly so she hears that dragging sound. Okay, I'm letting it drag a little bit, making a little bit of noise. Okay, here's a tug strap. Here's a dog choke chain with some clasps. Here's a uh, horse chain, a stud chain. I may use it. I'm just going to see what fits the best. Okay, see what we did, the stud chain is a good extra piece, extra length, maybe a little stronger than this dog choke chain. We'll use whatever's appropriate, probably this with Eve and the stud chains with Sadie. And uh, we are ready for the next step in the next session and we'll first try it with Eve. 
Eve always first because of her disposition will get both tug straps on and then um, maybe we'll have a third person if we can arrange it and pick up the harness pole and have her uh, move forward with it perhaps with something dragging on a single tree that will make noise. That's what we'll try perhaps next. This is a postscript of today's session because we need to have a lot of repetition with Sadie. We're going to try every time we work her. Ah, you see what I'm saying? Every time we work her we have to try to challenge her with straps and so forth making sure that there are no straps hanging down that her foot would get caught because that would be a crash for sure. Uh, Sadie is even putting on the blinders. Katie is. Uh, and uh, I'm hanging around just in case there's problems, but what we're going to do is just uh, lead line her up and down this driveway with the blinders on so she gets used to not being able to see in her peripheral vision, having to deal with maybe noises that she isn't sure about because you see we're right on a creek bank here and there are a lot of rodents and critters of all sorts. It's not a windy day, but I'm sure there are smells out each day different to a horse, so we just want to get Sadie to be more consistent with us. We know she has it in her, it's just that she doesn't have enough repetition yet, but she is Eve's daughter, and we know that we're going to get her compliance with consistency. If there's any problem in today's exercise, I'll turn the camera back on. Katie has the uh, drive lines on her shoulder. We may or may not use them today. We just want to get Sadie used to all those harness straps for oh. today. Oh. Since there's only two of us, Katie and me, I think what we'll do next is if she, if Sadie is good on this uh, path and coming back, we'll put the reins on, but we'll keep the lead line direction as well. And we'll let you know if there were any problems. And think about it. After that, we've got to actually hitch them both to the harness pole and pull, ultimately, a farm implement. That's our long-term goal. We used the drive lines with the lead line to walk in both directions on the driveway. Sadie was responsive but slightly stressed, occasionally throwing her head. Thus, we did not get video for these few minutes of training since both handlers were needed while driving Sadie with the reins. Down this driveway, with Eve attached on both sides with tug straps, with the extender chains, to our training harness pole. There's only two of us, so we're going to leave this camera on the scene. If there's trouble, we always think about how to get out of trouble, although we don't expect it with Eve, you never know. Especially back here where there are wildlife critters running around. We're going to quick release back here. There's two quick releases on this training harness pole, the back white piece of PVC. And Katie's pretty good about controlling at the head. We're not doing this with reins today. We're doing it just with lead line. If we are successful without incident, we're going to come back and we're going to attach this uh, single tree. It's an ABS single tree that I've used in the past with my horses to the back to be pulled by this white piece of PVC on the back of the training harness pole. And you see we have a chain that we can lift up off the ground. So I'll be lifting the training harness pole with the chain of the back of the single tree. If that goes well, we're going to hook up this ABS log for training purposes um, to the single tree. And then we have a chain on the back of it so we can walk along with it up off the ground. 
Now this may prove to be too challenging and not safe enough. I'll just have to take it one baby step at a time until we have another person here, in which case at our next session we'll schedule yet a third person. Now I'm going to take this tripod, move it back a little bit, and you're seeing, actually I'm going to move it back and over so you don't see the glare of the sun. You'll be seeing us walk down. You won't be able to hear us because we don't have mics on today. Walk down, do a hot turn, that's a left turn, with the training harness pole. This is the first time we've done it with two tug straps and our chain extenders. And I'm using, just in case I need a cue, my cart whip to touch Eve's hips. Notice how we have the tug straps through the loops in the back of the Bridget. All of this may have to be adjusted. We'll just have to see. Now if this were Sadie, we'd expect her to possibly pull up her back leg. She tries to get away from these straps, in which case I feel that the tug straps are, uh, yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're okay for Evie, but maybe that loop holding the tug straps uh, try to help me remember, Katie, we need to make some more holes. We need to get them higher. And right now we've used all the holes. Okay, here's our uh, attempt today to walk down the driveway with Eve fully harnessed with the training harness pole. Step up, Eve. Step up. Good girl. That was successful. However, let me point out that whoever's carrying the back of that training harness pole has to be able to walk really fast when you do the ha or the G-turn. I think as a next step, what I'm going to do is take this single tree and bring it over to the back of the training harness pole. I'm going to disconnect the training harness pole for a minute so that we can uh, Hmm. Turn it around and turn Eve around without having to go in a big G or a ha uh, turn. Okay, I now have the ABS single tree hooked to the back of the training harness pole with one quick release on the side where Eve is hitched. We're going to pick up the training harness pole connector with a quick release. Then I'm going to, not using the chain, but using the ABS, pick up the training harness pole and the single tree, and we're gonna take the same route as we did before. When I pick up the single tree, watch the back of the training harness pole. So in an attempt to solve that waving problem, I have attached the chains to the far ends of the back of the training harness pole. And we'll see if that works. We will not move Eve until we're quite sure that we have full control over the movements of the single tree and the training harness pole front and back. Step up.
Well, that was success. Uh, my way of attaching the chains to the far ends of the back of the harness pole kept it from waving. Eve was good. I just read my first issue of the Small Farmer's Journal and I picked certain articles out of the table of contents and went right to them. And one of them that I picked, I was almost afraid to go to it, but I knew I had to, was titled Rex. W-R-E-C-K-S. And what does that mean, Rex? Well, you know, even though the farmers were using horses that they totally trusted were trained, something, something caused a wreck. And there were like three or four different situations, including lightning and a bridle falling off and so forth. It caused wrecks with their very trustworthy trained pulling horses. So there's no ever feeling 100% secure and there's always reasons to think about what if, what would you do, and that's why I have a lot of quick releases. Now watch, I'm going to take the ABS log So, Katie, what we need is a person right there yeah. when we do this. This is up this way. Uh -huh. That person is holding up the single tree the same way I just did. Okay. And you've got the front end. Okay, we have a plan for next time. And we hope to show you success in our training procedure for farming with horses. Our cast of characters. Sadie and Eve, Sammy, Rusty and Susie, Heifer Calf Sela. For more information, www.cowgirlchannel.com. <laughs>